teach a little bit and preach a little bit and whatever God does we'll just tell him thank you is that all right Joshua 1 5 when you have it stand to your feet for the reading of God's Word amen I want you as we read this not to see this as an exercise in history but rather a prophecy for your destiny I want you to take this away from being the mandate that God gave Joshua and make it a conversation between you and God so that you can see what is about to happen in your life I didn't come to bring a happy meal I didn't come to bring a sandwich or a lunch I came to bring you a word from the Lord so that you would be ready for what God would do in your life if you believe how many believers do I have in the house tonight oh bless his name if you got this many believers Jesus didn't have this many believers around him when he raised Lazarus from the dead so when you get this many believers in here anything can happen tonight look at your neighbor and say anything can happen tonight now I know you've been in church all week and your body is tired but I want you to shake yourself and wake up because God's got something for you and you can't let the devil make you miss it you can't get tired you can't get weak you can't break down there it's going to be a move of God and you've got to be ready to receive look at somebody and say anything can happen in here tonight anything anything take the brakes off open up your mind stir up your spirit get ready for God to do something in your spirit that's why the devil's been fighting you because he didn't want you to get this word but the devil is a liar anything can happen in this place tonight open your mouth and shout hallelujah glory to God hallelujah there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life as I was with Moses so I will be with thee I will not fail thee nor forsake thee be strong and of good courage for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee turn not from it to the right or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithsoever thou goest or whithersoever thou goest this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous and thou shalt have good success there are some successes that are not good successes I don't want it if it's going to drive me crazy. I don't want it if I'm going to have to stay up all night watching it, scared to go to sleep, worried about somebody stealing it. I don't want it if getting it's going to make me lose sight of who I am as a believer. I don't want it if it's going to make me backslide. I don't want it if it's going to make me carnal. I don't want it if it's going to make me evil and vicious. I want good success. Somebody shout good success. The blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow to it. I don't want the kind of stuff that's going to make me grieve over it. I want something that's going to bring me some joy and some peace and some blessings when I get it. Shout hallelujah. <laughs> Have not I commanded thee be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid. Don't be afraid. Don't be intimidated. Don't be vulnerable. Don't be insecure. Neither be thou dismayed for the Lord thy God. God is with thee whether so ever thou goest it doesn't make any difference where you go if you move if you stay God's gonna be with you if you take that new job he's gonna be with you if you start that business he's gonna be with you because the blessing is not on the place the blessing is on you 
wherever you go God said I'm going to bless you if you make your bed in hell I'll bless you out of there if you take the wings of the morning and ascend to the uttermost parts of the earth I swear I'm going to bless you God is saying to somebody I'm not going to let you die till you get your blessing I kept you alive to bless you I rebuked the devil to bless you I stirred up your gifts to bless you don't you die till you get what I promised you who am I talking to tonight then Joshua commanded the officers of the people saying pass through the host and command the people saying prepare now watch this closely prepare your victuals this is what I want you to get for within three days ye shall pass over this Jordan within three days you're gonna go through a transition he says within three days you shall cross over this Jordan to go in to possess the land with the Lord your God giveth you to possess it somebody ought to be shouting about right now I want to use a subject remain standing because I want to pray with you but I want to use a subject embrace the change embrace the change in other words there's some changes coming in your life don't worry about it don't back up from it don't be intimidated by it God wants you to embrace it to hug it to take it close to you change is not a bad thing you're in transition my God, you're in transition. There's some things being switched around. But when God gets through with the switching, you're going to come into blessings like you have never seen before. Do you hear what I'm saying to you tonight? Let's pray while we're standing. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you tonight for bringing me across the waters to speak to this royal delegation of believers who stand on the cusp of greater things. I pray that you would stir up the gifts that lie within them and feed their very souls until they want no more. I thank you for what you're about to do. Have your way in this place. In Jesus' name, somebody shout amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Keep your Bibles open for a few moments because there's some things I want you to notice. Whenever God says anything, his word is absolute power. When he speaks a thing, something is going to happen. God only said, let there be light one time, but the light hasn't gone out since he said it. The words that he speaks are spirit and life. They are power and enlightenment. God's word is so important that Job said, I esteem it above my necessary food. David said, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. In other words, I can't see where I'm going save the word show me. In David's day, they had what was called ankle lamps that were tied to the ankles of the traveler. Now, the ankle lamp was so low that it didn't let you see way down the road. It just let you see how to make your next step. But with no street lights and no outer lights to guide your way, if you didn't have an ankle lamp, you couldn't make it through dark places. So David says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. You don't have to ask God to let you see the next 20 years or the next 10 years. Lord, just let me see my next step. For the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. That's why you need the word of God so you can see your next step. Now if God says something one time it's powerful. He only said Lazarus come forth one time and it was powerful. He says to light thy kumai and the damsel arose up out of death and set up in the bed. He touched the widow of Nain's casket and said arise and the dead boy got up out of the casket when God spoke one time. 
but in my text three times God says the same thing in verse number six he says be strong and of good courage for unto this people shalt thou divide an inheritance in verse number seven he says only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is in the law and then in verse number nine he says it again have not I commanded thee he said I'm gonna say it one more time be strong and of good courage be not afraid neither be thou dismayed for the Lord thy God is with thee whithersoever thou goest three times God tells us to be strong and be very courageous about success you would think if God said be strong he'd tell you to be strong about failure about testing times about hard times about lack about doing without but God says be strong because I'm about to put success on you one of the hardest things you will ever have to manage in your life is success people don't hate you when you fail you don't have gossip and enemies when you fail you have gossip and enemies when you're going up and you have to be strong enough I don't know whether you understand this expression at home we call them haters you have to be strong enough to walk into your blessing even in the midst of people who are gossipers and haters and backbiters and yet you've got to set your face like flint and say I know this is God and I'm going to walk into it anyway be strong and very courageous say amen somebody now I want you to notice the, the nuances of this text. Three times God says the same thing, to be strong and be very courageous and then he warns us not to be afraid because fear will negate success. It will destroy success. It will eat up success like cancer. And I don't care how much teaching you get about success or prosperity, if you don't change your attitude, you cannot change your altitude your altitude your height is only modified by your attitude so God says I want you to get the attitude of a winner before you get in the fight you can't get in the fight and then try to be strong he said I want you to be strong before you get in the fight I want you to get the attitude of winning even though you may feel like this is the most testing time in your life I want you to be very courageous because God says I swear I'm going to bless you can you believe that tonight and then he says something that is of great importance he says prepare your victuals and I want you to notice I'm gonna get back into this in a minute about this whole food thing but he says prepare your victuals get your food ready you gotta eat like a winner I'm gonna say that again you got to eat like a winner you see all of these people training for the Olympics they don't eat like losers and expect to win you gotta eat like a winner he said prepare your victuals for in three days you're going to cross this Jordan you're going to go through transition now transition is never easy because when you're going through transition you're neither here nor there you're in between places you're too far from where you came from to go back to being who you were but you're not quite where you're going so you can't enjoy the blessings of getting where you're going you're somewhere in the middle is there anybody in here who feels like you're somewhere in the middle you're saying Lord I thank you I'm not what I used to be but I'm not quite what I'm gonna be I'm somewhere in the middle of transition transition my brothers and sisters is not comfortable transition is not easy transition can be difficult but God said to Joshua at this season in his life I want you to prepare victuals your food now because in three days I'm going to take you through transition or I'm going to take you through changes somebody say changes now I don't know about you it depends on your personality profile some people handle change very well some people do not handle change very well uh, I will only say this because I'm in the UK and I don't think my sister will ever get this tape but uh, I have a sister who hates change once she gets a house she's gonna stay in the house forever if she gets an apartment she's gonna stay in the apartment forever if she gets a car I can't get her to trade the car in she keeps the car till the muffler falls off and the engine is rusted and the battery is corroded and she's still driving the same car 
gave her a car and told her, look, just don't keep it too long. She still got it. I said, trade it while you can get some money back. I, why, why should I trade it? It's still good. I told her it's good now, but good doesn't last. You need to trade it while it's still good so that you can get the value out of it because you lose money when you hold stuff too long. Many times success is determined by timing. The value of a property is not controlled by its ingredients. It only retains equity for a certain period of time and you've got to move it while it's still valuable. If you are a person that does not adjust or acquiesce to change easily, you're going to have a difficult time walking with God because you have a God of change. He is moving God. He is a quickening spirit. He is a rushing mighty wind. He is a well of living water. You will never see God represented by something that is stagnant or stable. He's not a monument. He's a movement. If he's above your head by day, he's a cloud. If it's by night, he's a pillar of fire. But he's always moving. And if you're going to walk with God, you got to keep your shoes on and be prepared to walk because you have a God that will move you out touch your neighbor and say you're getting ready to move now you, you in order to move you've got to have some fuel you don't put gas in a car you're not going to drive the first thing they're going to do when they get ready to fly me back home the plane is going to fill the tanks up with gas because it's getting ready to go somewhere the further the distance of travel the more the fuel is going to be taken in because to him whom much is given much is required some of you come into a meeting like this and you don't eat much because you've already decided you're not going to do anything with it you're a parked car in a garage and you're not going anywhere and so the message goes over your head because you don't need it but somebody sitting there saying I need this word because something is about to happen in my life and I've got to soak up every piece of this word I can get and I got to eat the whole thing because after this I'm going to come into my blessing I didn't come to church every night just to jump over a puddle of water I'm gonna go a great distance off of this word I'm gonna be strengthened by this word I'm gonna raise my entire family off of this word I'm coming out of debt by this word I'm coming out of depression by this word I'm coming out of adversity by this word God wouldn't be sending all of these generals from all over the world to feed me the word of God if he was gonna park me for the next year He's getting ready to take me out for a flight. I'm getting ready to rise above my storm and my opposition. God wouldn't invest this kind of gas into something he wasn't going to use. Something is about to happen in my life. You've got to announce it and declare it and speak it and decree it. Let the devil know I'm getting ready to take flight. This too shall pass. I'm going into orbit into another dimension. Shout a hallelujah. My God, my God, I feel something in this place. Get your Bibles. We're going to go back a minute. I want you to notice three things. I want you to notice, first of all, that God said be strong three times. And I want you to notice that God also said that there are going to be three days and then you're going to cross this Jordan. Three days, three times. God said three times be strong. And then he said in three days you're going to cross this Jordan. Somebody say three. Now you must realize I'm going to give you three questions that will come at three different stages in your life and these questions will represent what happens on these three days in your life. Now when I say in three days you're going to cross this Jordan, I don't think you really understand me. I want you to realize that when I say three days, I'm not just talking about three 24-hour periods. I'm talking about you're going to go through three stages in your life and I'm going to describe the stages and tell you the questions that you're going to ask at each stage and then you determine where you are. But when you get to the third day, you're getting ready to cross over into the promised land like you have never crossed before. Are you ready for this? 
go to Exodus chapter 16 for just a moment and let's take a look at Exodus 16 I believe there's some food back there God wants us to have Exodus chapter 16 verse number 15 16 15 Exodus 16 15 Exodus Genesis Exodus Leviticus Genesis Exodus come on now Exodus 16 verse 15 if you not found Exodus by now come to the altar when you have it say amen, amen. listen at what God says and when the children of Israel saw it they said one to another in fact let's go back because I want you to see what they saw let's go back to nine and Moses spake unto Aaron say unto all the congregation of the children of Israel come near before the Lord for he have heard your murmurings God said I've heard your murmurings I heard how you complain I heard how frustrated you were I saw you sighing driving to work I saw you sitting on the bus frustrated I heard your murmurings I just want to thank him for being a God who can hear my murmurings knows where I'm at knows what I'm going through and it came to pass as Aaron spake unto the whole congregation of the children of Israel that they should look toward the wilderness and behold the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud and the Lord spake unto Moses saying I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel speak unto them saying at even ye shall eat flesh and in the morning ye shall be filled with what ye shall be filled with what Talk back to me. Ye shall be filled with what? Bread. And ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. Now look at verse 15. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, It is manna, for they wist not what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord hath given you to eat. Can you say amen? Sometimes when you've got more time, read on down to the 21st verse. What I want you to see out of this text is that God told them, I'm going to send you bread down from heaven. Somebody shout bread. He said, I'm going to send you bread down from heaven. But when the bread came, they looked at it in shock and in horror and said, manna. And manna means, what is it? What is it? I want you to understand that in the first day, the question you're going to ask is, what is it? And I'm going to tell you why you ask, what is it? There is a difference between hearing the promise of God and receiving the promise of God. When they heard about it, they heard that it was going to be bread coming down from heaven. Whatever they pictured in their mind bread was going to look like, when it came, it didn't look like what they expected. Here lies the problem with telling people about vision sometimes your vision is affected by your past experiences and when God starts telling you what he's going to do you expect it to look like what it used to look like and when you expect it to look like what it used to look like and it comes looking different from what you expected you say Lord it isn't looking like what I thought it was going to look like what is this manna meant what is it because the answer was unrecognizable to them because it didn't look like what they had in mind now for the purpose of theological continuity let me take a moment and say that I understand that this is an Old Testament picture of the relationship between Christ and Israel for Israel prayed for the Messiah to come down out of heaven and when the Messiah finally did come down out of heaven he came through 42 generations Generations, stepped down into the womb of a virgin wrapped himself up in flesh and came walking out amongst men and they said what is it because Jesus didn't look like what they thought he ought to look like because Jesus came out of Nazareth and they said how can any good thing come out of Nazareth because Jesus did not look like what they had in mind they rejected him John says he came unto his own and his own received him not but as many as received Received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God what are you getting at preacher I'm glad you asked I want you to understand that God's answers don't look like your questions 
and that when you ask God to send you a blessing don't be surprised when it doesn't look like what you had in mind you told the Lord you wanted a husband and you wanted him to be a certain height and a certain size and you wanted him to have a certain job and then when God sent the answer it didn't look anything like what you had in mind and you said uh, uh, Lord uh what is it <laughs> you 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 prayed for a job you've been praying and believing God for a job and when God finally opened the door and you finally got the job that God wanted you to have now you're on the job murmuring and complaining saying what is it but you have to trust God's answers even when they don't look like what you pictured in your question because God knows what you need to get you through the first day experience in the kingdom of God how many of you know what it's like to see God move in a strange way and leave you confused and you find yourself in a situation where you're saying Lord what is this I don't understand it it doesn't look like what I thought I don't feel like what I thought I would feel like the blessing doesn't seem like what I thought it would be many many times God will send you a blessing but it's wrapped up in trouble and it's wrapped up in problems and it's wrapped up in responsibilities and it's wrapped up in heartache but God has got that thing set up so an unbeliever can't get it if you don't have faith you won't go through the hell you have to go through to get your blessing but some of us have been through enough trouble that come hell or high water we say whatever it takes to get this blessing I'm going to get it if I have to go through trouble if I have to go through storms if I have to go through heartache I want my stuff somebody shouted I want my stuff and the Bible said that God sent the answer but they looked at the answer and asked the question what is it man uh, what is it? Look at this manna that comes down out of heaven. Jesus said, your fathers ate manna in the wilderness and they perished. But I am the true bread that cometh down out of heaven. If you eat of this that I have, you shall never perish. Manna. They looked at him and said, manna. And because they refused the bread, they lost the blessing. There are some things that God will give you that if you don't receive it, you will lose the blessing. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but... But God will offer you a blessing it's up to you whether you're going to take it or not he's not going to force you to succeed he's not going to make you overcome you have to want it bad enough to go get it look at your neighbor and say go get it now you must realize that manna doesn't have legs so it can't walk manna doesn't have wheels so it can't roll manna didn't come in a car so you can't ride it the manna was a stationary object that was laid out from the tent and the bible said it came in the morning that after the dew fell then appeared the manna after the dew fell now the dew is symbolic of the holy spirit after the dew fell then the manna appeared whenever you see the anointing fall the manna will come behind the anointing that's why people can't curse what God has blessed he will anoint you before he sends the blessing and after the dew falls the man is coming I'm learning now to get happy just because the dew fell I don't even have to see the manna if I see the dew I know the man is about to appear I don't know who I'm preaching to tonight but there's an anointing that God's had on you lately you don't even understand it but that anointing that's falling on your life Life is nothing but do and after you get that anointing that manna is about to fall you don't even have to wait till you get the bread to get happy you ought to start thanking God right now because something is about to happen in your life I can't hear you and the manna fell after the dew came and it fell in front of the tent and the Bible says that when it fell in front of the tent how are we going to get the manna from in front of the tent into the house where I need it you have to realize that if you don't go get it it won't happen if you're talking about prosperity you're talking about success if you don't go for it you will never get it it is not going to come and ring the doorbell it's not going to come 
and knock on the door you have to get out of your tent come out of your comfort zone come out of your fear come out of your insecurity and say you know what I'm going to go and get what God has for me I refuse to live all of these years and be intimidated and be afraid I'm gonna get my stuff and let me say something about age some of you are old enough now that you don't care what anybody thinks you say I'm too old to worry about what you think I've got to get out of this tent and get my stuff shake your neighbor and say get out of that tent get out of that tent get out of that box get out of that narrow-mindedness get out of that defeated mentality get out of that tent get away from that circle get away from those dead beach get away from those people that don't wish you any good get away from those people that don't want you to succeed get out of the tent you can't get the man of staying with people like that get out Look at your neighbor on the left and right, say, excuse me, but I gotta go. I can't go to a conference like this and not get stirred up. I gotta go. I gotta get out of my tent. I gotta get out of my comfort zone. I gotta get out of it. I got to go. Ha. Glory, shout, I got to go. You don't know what you released when you said that. Everything that had you tied up, everything that had you tied down, everything that had you restricted began to break loose. I got to go. Ain't no doubt about it. I got And they had to get out of the tent. And the Bible said they had to reach out and get it. Somebody just reach out and get it. They had to reach out and get it. I'm, I'm reaching out and getting I'm reaching out I'm stretching I'm gonna have to stretch in this first day I got to stretch I got to stretch and get something that I don't fully understand I got to stretch and get something that doesn't look like what I thought it was gonna look like I got to stretch away from my tradition to receive what he has for me I got to stretch from the familiar to the unfamiliar I got to stretch from the terrestrial to the supernatural I've got to stretch from the human to the divine I've got to stretch from fear to faith I've got to stretch no oh, my God, I need to be around some stretchers. I'm tired of being around people who are scared to death. I need to be around somebody that's got long arms and a stiff back and a strong mind. Look at your neighbor and say, stretch! Somebody holler, stretch! The Bible said that they stretched out from their tent and began to gather the bread. Got to gather the bread. And as they began to gather the bread, the interesting thing that you will notice in Exodus is that the Bible says that when they began to gather the bread, God did not distribute the bread equally. It was fair, but it wasn't equal. I thought that in order for God to be just, he ought to give all of us the same amount of bread. But God says no. He said, unto some I gave a small amount of bread because they didn't eat much. And to others I gave a large amount of bread because they ate more. Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying. So it's no need in you looking around the corner at somebody getting jealous because they got more bread than you. They got more because they could handle more. Look at your neighbor and say, can you handle what I got? You looking at me all funny. Can you handle what I got? Look like you're having a hard time handling what you got. Stop looking over at what God has given me. It's not God's job to give you what he gave me. You want God to give you what he has for you. Can you handle? One man had five kids. He got more loaves. The other man had one child. He got less loaves because God responds to hunger. I, I'm going to say it again. Oh, I'm ready for you today. I brought something for you today. God responds to hunger. Look at your neighbor and say, are you hungry? If they say no, get up and move. You've been around people who didn't want anything long enough. Find 
find somebody to hang around who's hungry for the things of God. You can't keep sitting around people who don't want anything. People who don't want anything are jealous and envious and petty and small and narrow. You need to sit around, work around, live around, marry somebody who's hungry, hire somebody who's hungry, date somebody who's hungry, be pastored by somebody who's hungry. Ah, you. Touch three people and say, I want it. 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 You'll never get it if you don't want it. Hallelujah. You need desire. Whatsoever you desire when you pray, believe you have received it and you shall have it. That's how I know I'm going to get it because I want it. I flat out want it. I think about it. I pray about it. I dream about it. I ride to work thinking about it. I won't let you go till you bless my soul. I want it. Come hell or high water, I I want it if I got to cry I want it if I got to crawl I want it if I got to lay hands on myself I want it if I got to encourage myself I, I want it now you must understand do not trivialize the principle that I'm teaching you for the Bible said, he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. God said, I'm not just going to fill you because you need it. I'm going to fill you because you want it. When you let me know you're hungry, I'm going to do a miracle for you. Jesus kept on preaching until somebody told him, them people are hungry. They're about to faint, Lord. If you don't give them something to eat, they're going to pass out. He said, if they're hungry, they need not depart. Bring me the two fish and five loaves of bread. I will do miracles for people that are hungry. Look at your neighbor and say, are you hungry? If they said yes, they're about to get a miracle. They're about to get a release. They're about to get manna for They're about to get a door open. They're about to get a way made. If you're hungry, God's going to give you beauty for ashes, or oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaven. Are you? Are you hungry? There's nothing worse than being tied down to somebody that's not hungry. Married to somebody who's not hungry. It's terrible to be married to somebody who doesn't want anything. You want something and he doesn't want anything. How can you be a help meet to a deadbeat? I said, how can you be a help meet to a deadbeat? You got to marry somebody who wants something. He may not have something, but for God's sake, let him want something. What is, what is this thing about hunger and provision? There is an association between hunger and provision, and provision is attracted to the hungry. God said, I will give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. God said, I'm not going to give you bread if you're not going to eat it. I'm not going to give you seed if you're not going to sow it. You have to be a person of action. You can't just be a person that, of emotionalism. You have to be a person of action. God said, when I see you sowing stuff, I'm going to seed into the sower. When I see you eating, I'm going to start baking bread for the eater. Are you a sower? Are you an eater? Because if you are, God is going to give a release to you. Can I get into this? Oh my God, you have to understand that hunger is just another way of describing a word that I want you to write down, capacity. Capacity. Hunger is just another word of describing capacity. God is saying that he gave manna according to their capacity. To those that had larger capacities, they got more manna. Mm. Good God. <laughs> if you got more room God's got more resources see the only people who shouted was the people who had more room the people who don't have no room you're satisfied where you are 
somebody else is gonna have to preach to you I came to talk to the people who got more room somebody shout capacity yes God says I sent bread I sent manna according to their capacity some tents had more capacity so I released more resources based on their capacity don't be jealous if you got two loaves of bread and I got ten because of all the capacity you have is a small amount two loaves is all you need to fill you well how can God give you two loaves and give me ten I serve him and you serve him I love him and you love him how can he be just and give you two and me ten because full is nothing but full and if two loaves is all it takes to fill you then God's not gonna give you three and maybe the reason you're not getting more is because you're not allowing yourself to want more Oh, but that person that's sitting next to you is hungry. They're hungry. They're ravenous. They're having a famine. They're thirsty for it. That's why you better not drop not one crumb. Because somebody sitting beside you will be like a dog that eats the crumbs that falls from the master's table. You better eat all of this word tonight. For after this word, God's going to put you in a situation of total transition. Look at your neighbor and say, you got three days. Yeah, 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 yes, three days, and everything is going to turn around, three days, and everything is going to turn, three days, oh, oh, Pass the word, pass the word, touch seven people and say something's about to happen, something's about to happen. <laughs> something's about to happen. You already know it in your spirit, don't you? You already got the witness on the inside, don't you? This ain't nothing but confirmation of what God already told you. Something is, something is about. Something is about. Something is about. My God, something is about. Somebody walk over and say, I want some more. Just watch this, watch this. Oh, I'm not supposed to say watch this. I'm supposed to say, get ready, get ready, get 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 We gotta go further. We gotta go further. I feel something. Woo! Mm-hmm. 
Can you hear that groaning? <laughs> That's hunger pangs. <laughs> Whenever you want something from God, just <laughs> They begin to hunger. The manna begin to fall based on their capacity. Uh, uh, look at somebody say, I got more room. Mm. If not that God hadn't been good to me, sis, but I got more room. And if I got more room, that means something else has got to happen. Because I have a God that fills all space. The book of Colossians says, by him all things consist. He fills all space. Whenever God forms a thing, he fills the thing he formed. He formed the earth and then filled it with life. He formed the sea and filled it with fish. He formed the air and filled it with birds. He formed the tabernacle and filled it with furniture. He formed the man, filled it with breath. He formed the church and filled it with the spirit. Whatever God forms, he will fill to capacity. In fact, your cup is about to overflow. David said, my cup runneth over. Surely, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. Somebody's about to step into a supernatural blessing from the Lord. Give him a praise right now. Watch this. You got to understand, there was one rule. God said, you cannot save the bread. You can't save it. You got to eat it all. Because anything that's left, the Bible said it gathered worms and began to stink. God is saying, I'm not going to let you fight today's battle with yesterday's bread. That means that God gives you bread for the day you're in. Oh, I wish I had time to work this. God gives you bread for the day you're in. God considers, God considers the devils of the day when he bakes the bread that you need. So that there will be no devil to come against you in this day that God didn't put in the bread something that you need to fight the devil of this day. So you got to say, give us this day. Our daily bread. Give me, don't give me Tuesday's bread on Wednesday. Give me the bread I need for the stage I'm at. One mother needs a certain kind of bread because she's raising little kids. And she needs a grace to raise little children. Put them in car seats and drive them to work or to school or wherever they've got to go. The other mother has got grown children. She's not worried about putting them in a car seat. She's worried about them taking the car. It's, a, it's They're both mothers. They're both parenting, but they're at different days. Do you have the bread you need for the stage you're at? Or are you trying to use yesterday's strategies against today's dilemmas as your days are the Bible says so shall thy strength be so God gives you strength for the day you're in somebody say now, now. that's what God wants you to have with him is a now experience not a then experience not a was experience he wants you to have a now experience if you try to do something off of what God gave you back then, it's going to stink. That's why I can't be locked up in no dead traditional church. Talking about this church was founded back in 1876. 
when Reverend Willie Wanda laid the first cornerstone in the church our church is a historical part of the society of the British domain I don't care if it's not feeding me right now I'd rather be shouting in a tent than to be confused in a cathedral give us this day somebody say now can't save it you can't hoard it you can't hold it back you've got to have the bread you need right now somebody shout now oh I'm getting at something come on let's go with me to Joshua go to Joshua back to Joshua we're going to Joshua my God my God am I preaching to somebody tonight uh, yes Lord yes Lord speak for thy servant hears hallelujah hallelujah what yes lord yes lord you're gonna destroy the yoke yeah he said i'm gonna destroy the yoke i'm not gonna i'm not just gonna shake it he said i'm gonna destroy the yoke somebody's gonna get a complete breakthrough tonight that's why the dew is falling in this place the holy ghost is getting ready to do something in this place somebody shout yes Look at Joshua with me, Joshua 5, 12, and then Joshua 5, 11. And they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover, unleavened cakes and parched corn in the selfsame day, in the selfsame day. And the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten of the corn of the land, neither had the children of Israel manna anymore, but they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. I want you to get to this second day question. This is the stage in your life that everything that God did before, the manna raining down from heaven, the dew coming down in the morning, the capacity filling of the tents, the worms eating up the leftover, everything that you got used to God doing and providing in a systemic methodology stops. And then the second day you ask, what happened? What happened? Lord, how could things be going so good? And then it all stops. What happened? And then the manna ceased. What do we do when the God who said yes now says no? Now it is true that God doesn't change, but his methods change. <laughs> he told Abraham to take now thy son, thy only son in Genesis 22 and go to a place I will show you of and offer him up as a sacrifice. And when Abraham got ready to obey him, God said, stay your hand, stop. Wait, you just told me to do it. Now you stopped. He told Moses to bring bullocks and goats and offer them up in the book of Leviticus as a sin offering and a trespass offering unto me. But then later he says, sacrifices and offerings thou wouldest not, but a body hast thou prepared for me. What do you do when it stops? What do you do when God changes his mind? The Bible says it repented the Lord that he ever made man. What do you do when the manna ceases? When the blessing stops coming from the place you expected it to come from. What do you do when the person who was helping you leaves you? What do you do when the friend God gave you betrayed you? What do you do when relationships change just when you need them the most? What do you do when the job you were counting on just laid you off work? What? do you do when the manna ceases does it mean that God doesn't love me no does it mean that God left me no does it mean that God has forsaken me no I don't understand what's happening something that I was counting on just stopped I got to get into this because I'm preaching to somebody tonight I don't know who it is 
Solomon built the temple and the Bible said that the glory of the Lord fell upon the temple so strong that the priests lay prostrate in the floor. See, the church plays around with an anointing and we get anointed and we get blessed, but we don't really get anointed. There is an anointing that will come so strong it'll knock every one of these musicians off of their instrument. There is an anointing that'll come so strong you will fall out of your seat down into the floor. You don't know whether you got your shoes on or off. You don't even care. There is an anointing that will shut down our service and leave us with tears running down our face. There is an anointing that comes so strong you don't care whether your tie is on or off. You start unbuttoning stuff and throwing it down. You don't even care. The Bible said the anointing fell so strong that the priests lay prostrate in the floor and they couldn't minister. And in the midst of that glory that came down, oh my God, somebody just lift your hands. I just feel glory all over the place. Just, just, just lift your hands and open your mouth and begin to give him some praise. Just, just a little bit of praise, just a little bit of praise and glory. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Come on into it. Come on into the glow. Come on in.